Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we have seen embedded system versus general purpose systems and classification of embedded system and few application areas of embedded systems. In this video, let us get into the next topics, elements of embedded system, core of embedded systems, the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller and RISC processors, Harvard and von Neumann architectures. So we have seen the classification of embedded systems in the previous video. Let us recall. The classification of embedded systems can be based on the generation, based on the complexity, based on the performance, based on the behavior and also based on the triggering of the device. Based on the generations in the sense we have seen first generation, second generation, third and fourth generation. And with respect to the complexity is concerned we have uh, named it as a small scale, medium scale and the large scale. Similarly, depending on the performance and the fu functional requirements, we will be having standalone, real time, networked or mobile. Based on the deterministic behavior, we will be having hard real time and soft real time, which is I have explained in the previous video. And based on the triggering also time triggered uh, embedded system or event triggered. These are the different embedded systems and few of these categories we have seen in the previous video. And now let us understand what are all the elements in the embedded system. Embedded system in the sense it will be having a hardware as well as the firmware, means the software. The main thing is here we will be having a system core. System core in the sense the heart of the embedded system we can say. This can be a microprocessor or this can be a microcontroller also. This is what the processor or processing device we can call. And the different types of microprocessors and microcontrollers we have, out of those any one can be a system core or it will be a FPGA, field programmable gate array or it can be a SIC means application specific integrated circuit or it can be a digital signal processing unit or it can be system on chip SOC also. So with this system core we will be having a memory unit. In this memory what we are going to do, we will be storing a program or we will be having a code what the functionality of the embedded system is going to be written. So the memory is required. This will be communicated with the system code and the memory is called as the firmware or the software we will, we will be calling. The embedded software will be stored in the memory that will be work with the system core. So with the system core we will be having obviously input and output so with that we will be having some supporting integrated circuits also. So totally we will be calling it as an embedded system and this embedded system will be interact with the external world where in the external world we are going to give some inputs and we will be looking at the outputs. So embedded system is that it will perform certain operation, it will not a general purpose one. And core of the embedded system, what the core consisting of, I said it is a heart of the embedded system. Core means it is a heart. What is the heart then? Microprocessor or microcontroller or digital signal processors are the heart of the embedded system where it is going to take the input and it is going to process that will be called as core. It will be taking the input and process and then it will give us the output. So general purpose and domain specific processors are these three or we will be having a programmable logic device also means there will be a device of logic gates we can consider and our logic we are going to call. We will be generally having and gates and then a combination of R gates. We can program these by making the connection of and gates and R gates that will be called as a programmable logic device. Similarly, we will be having application specific integrated circuits means some integrated circuits are going to be fabricated or manufactured only to perform certain operation that will be called as application specific. These microcontroller and microprocessors are not application specific. These are general purpose. Okay, Application specific in the sense for that particular application the IC is made. And commercial off the shelf components also. Some components uh, off the shelf components also we can use as a core of embedded system. So here we need to remember microprocessor and microcontroller is the main thing where we can consider it as a core of embedded system and it can be these also. So let us understand what is a microprocessor and what is a microcontroller. We need to understand the difference between these two. But microprocessor is that it will be having an ALU inside 
and also it will be having a control unit to control the functions of the ALU. ALU is arithmetic logical unit to perform addition, subtraction or logical operations like and or not like that and also it will be having few registers to store the data. So these three are the main components it will be called as CPU in microprocessor and what microcontroller consisting of with these three components means the CPU this microcontroller will be having IO ports will be having counters will be having timer and also it will be having RAM inside it will be having ROM also. So microcontroller will be having all these components including CPU with the CPU we will be having all these but in the microprocessor it will be having only CPU if any RAM and ROM is required we need to connect it externally it is RAM for the microprocessor. Similarly ROM is required we need to connect externally. If a clock driven uh, clock generator is required crystal, crystal clock generator we need to connect. So this is what microprocessor is. Now if you look at the difference the first thing is it consisting of a CPU performs arithmetic and logical operations example is 80, 86 that is microprocessor. In microcontroller generally with that CPU we will be having memory also that memory can be a RAM it will be also ROM, flash memory and IO ports will be there in microcontroller. Everything will be there in microcontroller. No need to connect any extra circuitry. And an example is Intel 8051 microcontroller. And in microprocessor we will be uh, using it in personal computers. In our computers we will be having i3, i5 processors. No, that will be called as a microprocessor. It will be there in personal computers. But microcontroller it will be used in embedded system. Generally we are going to use these microcontrollers preferably in embedded systems. And because of the external circuitry is required extra ROM, extra ROM, timer counter, clock driven, uh, clock generator is required in microprocessor. It becomes complex and expensive also and with large number of instructions also required to process these devices. But in microcontroller it is very simple and inexpensive with less number of instructions to process the data. Number of instructions in microprocessor is more compared to microcontroller. And it is a dependent unit. Obviously, it will be depending on some other components. Without these components, we can't use a microprocessor, right? That, and microcontroller is, it is a self-contained device. Everything will be there in the microcontroller itself. And it consumes more power, obviously, because of the other devices. It consumes less power. And limited power saving options are there in microprocessor and in, it includes lot of power saving features in microcontroller. And architecture which we will be having in microprocessor it will be depending on a von Neumann architecture. Let us see what is von Neumann architecture and microcontroller will be having a Harvard architecture model. Let us see in the next topic. And it uses a external bus to interface RAM, ROM and other peripherals. Why? Because we need to have a external devices. Obviously, to connect those, we will require external wires. So, those wires will be called as bus here. Those wires will be carrying the information that will be called as bus generally with respect to the microprocessor or microcontroller is concerned. But in microcontroller, everything will be inside. That's why internal controlling bus is required in microcontroller. These are the main differences between microprocessor and microcontroller. Don't, for, don't forget microprocessor will be having only a CPU that is ALU and registers but in microcontroller it will be having CPU, RAM, ROM, on chip, on chip in the sense everything on the same chip and also the flash memory. And then let us understand what is RISC and CISC processors. These are the two different methods of processors we can say. So what is RISC? It is reduced instruction set computer or represents reduced I is instruction set, S is set, C is computer. CISC means complex instruction set computer. If you remember RISC and CISC explanation, you can write all these differences easily. So let us get into this. RISC means reduced instruction set computer. Obviously, here in RISC, we will be having less number of instructions, right? That is the first difference. Reduced instruction set means less number of instructions are there. CISC is complex instruction set means the number of instructions are more and complex. And here software centric design it is. RISC is a, soft, a software centric design 
and CISC is a hardware centric design and here uh, RISC processors require low power and CISC processors require high power and it requires more RAM, more memory is required here and here it requires minimum amount of RAM and simple decoding here because of see here you can uh, relate this reduced instruction set means I said the instruction set is less because of that a simple decoding is uh, enough for an instruction since here the instruction is complex it requires complex decoding instruction and processors are highly pipelined pipelined uh, will be there in uh, risk and processors are not pipelined or less pipelined in CISC and then execution time is very less here because of the instruction set is uh, less because of the lower instruction set it will be executing faster execution time is less means faster and execution time is very high here it requires more execution time and uses multiple registers it uses a single register and it does not require external memory for calculations it requires external memory for calculations also and compound addressing mode uh, risk is going to use and limited addressing mode here it is going to be used and risk architectures can be used with high-end applications like telecommunication image processing video processing things are going to use risk processors and CISC architecture can be used in low-end applications like home automation things and security system, consumer goods are going to use CISC microprocessors. And small code size because of again the reduced instruction set. Here the large code is there because of the complex instruction set. And fixed instruction format here only 32 bit can be possible. But in CISC processors we can have a 16 bit up to 64 bit for each instruction. Okay, ALU can handle 16 bit instruction up to 64, but here it is fixed to 32. And some examples for uh, RISC processors are you might have come across ARM processors and PIC microcontroller, power architecture, Alpha, AVR, ARC, and uh, Spark. These are having RISC kind of processors. And CISC processor we can see in Intel x86 CPUs and Motorola. 68000 families and uh, VAX system bar 360 these are the different processors and controllers where the RISC architecture and CISC architecture is going to be adopted and then we will be having Harvard and Von Neumann architecture if you recall we have seen while the difference between the microprocessor and microcontroller it is mentioned as Von Neumann architecture and Harvard architecture let us see the difference the Von Neumann architecture is that it will be having a common bus in between I.O. devices and a CPU and uh, code memory as well as data memory. Means a common bus will be shared, means the common wire will be shared in between these three. But in Harvard architecture you can observe, for a program memory to CPU we will be having one bus, CPU to data memory we will be having another bus. Means there are multiple bus here in the Harvard architecture. In the one human architecture we will be having a common bus if CPU want to communicate with the memory, it should use the same bus. Only one device has to use this common bus. But here in the Harvard architecture, if the CPU want to communicate with the program memory, it will communicate with this bus and with the data memory, it will communicate with this bus. So let us see the difference. One human architecture. It is an ancient computer architecture. Ancient means it is old. Uh, one human means a common data bus, it is a old one. The new technique is that are the modern computer architectures based on the Harvard architecture model. So it is faster. And CPU is connected to data memory and uh, RAM with a single, by a single memory. And here CPU is connected memory, RAM and program memory separately. And CPU cannot access instructions and data at a same time. Why? Because it is a single uh, bus it will be having it should allocate the different times for instruction as well as data when the bus is free but here in the CPU can access the instructions and data at a time at a time it can access both and same physical memory address is used for instructions as well as data but here separate physical memory address address is separate here for instruction as well as data here it is common and common bus is used for data and instruction transfer again it is saying a separate bus is used and speed of execution is slower here because of a single bus here it is faster and it because not capable of fetching the instruction and data both at the same time but here 
uh, very same time we can use we can fetch the instruction as well as data and it is cheaper in cost because of a single bus we can say here it is somewhat costly and it requires less hardware and low in performance it requires more hardware but in high in performance and it is used in personal computers and small computers one human architecture this harvard architecture used in microcontrollers and digital signal processing let us see the few more concepts in the next video thank you